This video explains the VASISEC 1977 model, which can be used to simulate interest rates. There are many applications in finance and risk management where simulated interest rates can be used. I have done a few videos on share prices and how to simulate them. Now interest rates show a very different behavior. They tend to go back to a long-term equilibrium. They do not drift away, they seem to be pulled back. This kind of behavior needs to be captured in our simulation. The Vasisek model belongs to the class of one-factor interest rate model. These models have in common that only one factor, the market factor, drives interest rates. There are different types of continuous time stochastic processes used in interest rate modeling. In all of these models, because time is a continuous variable, the letter D is used to denote the change in some variable. Basically, you can differentiate as time is continuous. Of course, in a simulation, we need discrete time. I will walk you through an implementation in Python. The code is available on GitHub. The link is down below in the description. Specifically, in the model, R denotes the short rate and therefore DR denotes the change in the short rate. Time refers to the letter T and thus DT denotes the change in time or equivalently the length of a time interval. The letter Z is a random term and dset denotes a random process. We need to know a little bit more about stochastic processes. If you want to know more about these beasts, please leave a comment below. A basic continuous time stochastic process for describing the dynamics of the short rate R is given by dr b dt plus sigma dz where dr is the change in the short rate, b is the expected direction of rate change or drift, dt is the change in time, sigma refers to the standard deviation of the changes in the short rate, and dz denotes a random process. It is common to assume that dz is drawn from a standard normal distribution, that is, the expected value is zero, and the standard deviation is 1. Obviously, by multiplying sigma, we know that the change in the short rate process has variance sigma squared. We make quite a few assumptions. The random nature of the change in the short rate comes from the random process dz. We already mentioned that dz is drawn from a standard normal distribution. The change in the short rate is proportional to the value of a random term, which depends on the standard deviation of the change in the short rate. The change in the short rate for any two different short intervals of time is independent. The expected value of the change in the short rate is equal to b, the drift term. Let's have a look at the Vasisek model. The parameter B may be regarded as the equilibrium level of the short-term interest rate, around which it stochastically evolves. When R, the interest rate, falls far below its long-term value B, the expected instantaneous variation of R is positive. In this case, the short-term rate will tend to move up. It will move uh, towards its long-term value quickly when it is far from it, and then the parameter A, the speed of return to the long-term mean value, is high. Let's go into Python and implement this model. Today I'm using Sublime text, which you can obtain for free. I think it's a terrific uh, text editor and I will execute my code um, using the command line, which I will show in a minute. So first uh, I have um, two scripts. I have a main script where I execute my code and then I have um, a rate.py file where I define my rate class. So in this case I follow object-oriented programming to optimize my code and also make it easy to apply the code in various different projects of mine. 
So I will talk you through the class step by step. If you are new to object oriented programming, I have done another video where I provide a short introduction. So the only library we need is NumPy, as one would expect with this type of simulation. I start with a dunder init method. So this is how I initialize an instance of the rate class. And as you can see, I always specify default settings using the equal to sign. So I assign certain parameter values. Capital N is the number of steps. So this basically gives me the number of simulated interest rates. So DT is the time step. So this is the discrete time step because we have to now work in discrete time once we go into a simulation. Rho is a scale. So that is the um, sigma um, in my PowerPoint notation. Um, alpha is my speed of adjustment. So it was A in the notation in the PowerPoint. Gamma is the long-term equilibrium or denoted B in the PowerPoint. And then we need an initial interest rate R0. You need that because well, we are um, in discrete time. You have to start from somewhere. Um, and you have to refer to the previous value of the interest rate. So in this case, I now assign all these different parameters. And so these um, parameters become the attributes of this particular class. So I can always refer to them using self dot and then the respective attribute. Now to obtain my um, Vasisek model, I first need the Wiener process. Now this is the random process which is actually driving the whole simulation. Now people can view this as the market risk or something else. Yeah? So again, mathematically, I don't really care that much. So I start by specifying the dimensions of my output vector using the numpy np dot zeros. And then I refer to self dot capital N. So this goes back to the number of steps of so a number of iterations I have in my simulation. So this gives me the output I want in terms of its dimension. Of course, at the moment, it's all um, equal to zero. Again, working in, in NumPy is useful for speed um, and here we work using NumPy arrays, which gives you some computational benefits. Now we start here with an in initial value where I simply take the standard normal distribution. We now multiply this by rho. So this is the sigma parameter you saw in the PowerPoint. Um, and then we um, have here the square root of um, dt. Yeah? So this is um, simply accounting for the time interval because well it matters. If you have quite a long time interval in between the points, the evolution will be more pronounced. Yeah? This is normal diffusion. I have done another video on random walks where I talk more about diffusion. Um, and then I build up the Wiener process um, as an, an iterative process. So you start with a certain value. This is my specified initial value. And I use here a for loop in range starting at 1. So 1 minus 1 gives, of course, a 0. And I specify here the initial value, which will be used then to simulate the out 1 using the indexing position one. And this then continues. It's basically nothing else but adding up the noise. And adding up the noise gives you fundamentally a random walk. In this particular case, we have the modification of the time interval and we do a scaling as well. Um, so we don't make it really standard normal. In the end, it will have a variance of rho um, times, of course, whatever time interval I need to specify. Good, let's um, go into the Vasisek model. So here we again start in a similar way. We specify our output uh, array and we fix the dimension using self.n. So this is what we specify in terms of a number of steps. 
The initial value is now given by the initial rate, yeah, so which I assign here. Again, I have default settings if nothing is specified. And uh, then I basically build up the equation you saw. The only difference is I have to do a discrete version of it. So the change in the rate would then refer to the current rate I want to know which depends on the previous ones. If you take this whole equation minus the previous one, you get here a change in rate, basically. So that's what it is. Um, the alpha is your speed of adjustment. The gamma is your long-term equilibrium. This term here is the previous value, which of course has a starting value defined by the initial um, interest rate provided. And then again, this is the time interval. And here we have the Wiener process, which are already simulated. So I initialize, in fact, a, a rate instance, and then I use the Wiener method on it. Yeah, so that's quite a funky way of doing it. Um, again, you know, people sometimes don't like this. Um, there are different ways of handling that. And I return here the output, which is in this case the NumPy array which will contain the simulated values. So that's the logic um, of my work. Let's go into main.py. So in here, I first import matplotlib.pyplot as plt to visualize my data. I then um, import my own self-made class. So from rate, import rate. I quite like to be explicit here in my import statement. So quite often I have, of course, 20, 30 different files defining different classes and so on and different functions. And it's kind of nice to, to know exactly what's going on. I first um, initialize my rate instance. I just call it, I use defaults in this case. And then I apply my Vasisag method. So I apply the method here using open close brackets, of course. Um, and then, of course, I reassign it. Yeah, but um, again, it's a matter of taste whether you like this. I'm reasonably happy with that. And then I plot um, finally and also show the output. Again, of course, you can save it. You can modify it as you wish. Let's run this. Um, I have to use another command line. So I go to the folder where I store my scripts and type in cmd and I go into the command prompt and now I type python main.py. So here you are, we now simulated our interest rate. That was hopefully useful. I see you in the next one.